Good evening, guys. We'll wait one, two minutes for other to join and then start. Okay. Okay, guys. Welcome back. Good evening, everyone. Uh, let's start today's session. Uh, I hope you know that in the last lecture, we were doing ellipse and we had stopped when we derived the equation of normal to the ellipse. Now, there are some more things which are related to tangents and normal. So let us uh, study that and then we'll move on to the other standard results. So what is the plan for today, guys? A plan for today is very simple to go through the tangents and normals theory and then study the most important thing that is the chord of contact, the parametric form of ellipse and end the session. I hope it is fine. And in the next session, we can do questions based on all the theory we have covered. So without further ado, let's get started. So first thing here is this, the condition that the line may be a tangent to the ellipse. Now, if you know in circle also, this condition is used. This is known as condition of tangency. And here, the condition of tangency is C square equals to A square M square plus B square. Correct, guys? Uh, so we have to derive this, basically. So let us derive this. Uh, it is given that this line is a tangent. So that means, uh, let's say we will assume as per our knowledge, we will assume the equation of tangent as per R. So let's say tangent is drawn at point P, X1 comma Y1. So we know that equation of tangent is T equals to zero. That means replace X square by X, X1. x square by x x1 plus y square by y y1 right is equals to 1. Now if I try to take LCM okay no not LCM I'll try to write the equation y y1 upon b square is equals to minus x1 x upon a square plus 1 here is y1 y right so this is the equation of tangent at point p which we derived but it is already given that the equation is y equals to mx plus c so that means guys if both these equations, one equation one and equation two, represent the equation of tangent. 
that means both of these equations are same so let me give you an example if two equations represent the same curve let's say 2x plus 4y equals to 8 and we have x plus 2y equals to 4 now see these two equations both represent the same curve or you can say that both of the equations are same so if both of the equations are same then their coefficients x ka coefficient 2 upon x ka coefficient 1 y ka coefficient 4 upon 2 and the constant term 8 upon 4 their coefficients are in ratio as you can see these all ratios are equal so what i'm trying to say is if two equations are same or two equations represent the same curve in this these two equations both represent the same straight line then their coefficients are in ratio or coefficients are in equal ratios so here also guys these two equations one and two represent the same tangent that means their coefficients should be in ratio correct so let's say uh coefficient so what is the coefficient of y here it is y1 upon b square and what is the coefficient of y here it is 1 so y1 upon b square into 1 will be equal to what is the coefficient of x it is minus x1 upon a and here it is m right and the constant term is 1 upon c so from here we can easily get the required condition how will you get the condition guys c uh we want c okay so from here i can get if i equate these two i can get y1 as b square upon c and if i equate these two i can get x1 as minus am upon c minus a square m you know guys minus x1 upon a square yeah so now point p lies on the ellipse that means it must satisfy the equation of ellipse so i can write x ki jaga pe x1 that means our equation will be or we'll get the condition x1 square upon a square plus y1 square upon b square equals to 1. What was x1 guys? x1 is minus a square m upon c. If I square it, I'll get a raised to 4 m square upon c square. And already we had a square plus. What is y1? y1 is b square upon c. So y1 square will be b raised to 4 upon b square c square is equals to 1. So we can cancel out a square and we can cancel out p square. Now see c square in the denominator is already LCM. So I can write a square m square plus b square. We can cross multiply equal to c square. This is my answer. This is the condition as it is given here. So if this condition is satisfied, then we can say that this line y equals to mx plus c is a tangent to the ellipse. I hope it is clear. The point of taking this derivation is very simple, guys. Please remember that whenever we have two equations representing the same curve, here equation 1 and equation 2 are representing the same tangent. That basically means that both the equations are same. That means we can compare their coefficients. Okay, guys. Is it clear? Who all are present now? Okay. Mamta, everyone. Rajesh. Is it clear? Give me a thumbs up. Okay. Super. Thank you all. Chalo. Now let's see what we have next so next is a summary you can say uh the equation of tangent to the ellipse this is the slope form obviously we had slope form in parabola as well we had slope form in circle as well and we'll have slope form in hyperbola as well 
So this is the slope form of the ellipse. What is it? Basically, what is slope form, guys? Slope form is y equals to mx plus c. Now, instead of this c, substitute the condition for tangency. What is condition for tangency? Here it is written. So what will be the value of c? It will be under root of a square m square plus b square. Basically, this is the slope form. Now, the point of contact. This, the point of contact, is the point of contact of tangent and the ellipse. Right? Very simple to get. Actually, we already got it. Right, guys? These are the point of contact. See? x1 and y1 is a point where tangent was drawn. That means x1, y1 was a point of contact. That is minus a square m upon c and b square by c. Minus a square m upon c and b square by c. So don't forget. And obviously, two tangents can be drawn from ellipse to an, to an ellipse from external point. Same as parabola and circle. From an external point, two tangents can be drawn. Correct, guys? Chalo. These are some standard results which I already know. Okay, okay. Just a second. Let me. Yeah. We already saw this now. Yeah. This is the MCU. Come. The condition line may be a tangent. What is it? This means they are asking for condition of tangents. Two, superb. Next is auxiliary circle. Now, please remember we did uh, something which is known as director circle. Don't get it confused with this. Director circle and auxiliary circle both are different. We study director circle for ellipse after this, but let us look at what is meant by auxiliary circle. The feet of perpendiculars drawn from either of the foci. This is the definition. There are two foci in ellipse to any tangent. To the ellipse s equals to zero. The equation of ellipse lies on the circle concentric with the ellipse. What does this mean? That if I draw a perpendicular from focus to any tangent on of the ellipse, then the foot of perpendicular will lie on a circle. And that circle is called the auxiliary circle, which is in fact concentric with the ellipse. What is meant by concentric? The centers of both of them are same. So let's look at it. The circle is called auxiliary circle. So this is our ellipse. This is the center. Right now, this center is the same center for the auxiliary circle. So let us say how the circle will look. This is the tangent. This is the focus. Now if I draw perpendicular from focus and this foot of perpendicular must lie on the circle. Right. Another perpendicular. This perpend foot of Q must lie on circle. That means if I draw a circle through P and Q such that its center is the center of the ellipse. I'll get the auxiliary circle, which looks like this. Okay. Oh, there is no, okay, wait, I'll make it. Circle will look like this. Circle will be passing through this and point Q. This red will be the circle. Now note that the circle will pass through the vertex. That means the 
point of intersection of ellipse and the major axis this point i am talking about right it will pass to the vertex of the ellipse so such is the auxiliary circle it will look like okay guys right if it's clear like give me a thumbs up everyone all good so we can proceed further guys yes or no okay thank you chalo next the equation of the auxiliary circle now it is very simple uh, if you noticed this is the ellipse this point is a comma 0 if this point let me write it if this point is a comma 0 what does this mean guys that the distance from center to this point is a which will be the radius of the circle so radius will be the radius will be the major axis that is a so the equation will be x square plus a square so x square x square plus y square equals to a square next now if the ellipse is the second standard ellipse that means a is less than b then the equation will be x square plus y square equal to b square because now the major axis is b please note the radius will correspond to the major axis now since your a is greater than b the major axis is x axis which is a so here it will come a square b is greater than a or a is less than b so here it will be b square next chord of contact now the equation of chord of contact remains the same as it was in parabola and as it, it was in circle the definition also remains the same the same will be in hyperbola so what is the chord of contact let us revise it the chord of contact is basically the line segment joining the point of contacts of tangent please read the definition let me read it for you the line joining the points of contact of tangent to an ellipse drawn from an external point p is called chord of contact so let's say this is an ellipse these are two tangents drawn these are the point of contact and if we join this point of contact we get a chord of contact which is ellipse oh this is slightly uh, you can say not proper wait let me adjust it it should be here yeah now it's better so this is the chord of contact right chalo the equation of chord of contact is t equals to 0 as we all know it is every time t equals to 0 whether it be circle ellipse parabola or hyperbola and the equation of chord with given middle point i hope you know this whose middle point is p x1 comma y1 its equation is t equals to s1 its equation is t equals to s1 So these are the standard results that we studied or we are studying from circle so no point in again deriving in all the method is same as done in circle and parabola and the equation of pair of tangent the equation of pair of tangent is s s1 equals to t square so these three standard result you need to remember the chord of contact which is t equals to 0 the chord with given middle point or chord bisected at point is t equals to s1 and third the equation of pair of tangents is s s1 equals to t square 
I hope you know the meaning of T, the meaning of S1. What is the meaning of T? T meaning replace that x square with x, x1, y square with y, y1, and so on. S1 means substitute the point in the expression of the ellipse. So these are some standard results. Let's see. We have next MCQs. Chalo. What is the equation of auxiliary circle for this ellipse where B is greater than N? Remember, I already told you that auxiliary circle corresponds to major axis. Hello. Come on, guys. What is it? Hello. Here yeah, you can answer. No one. Is everything clear, guys? Yeah. One. Superb. Thank you. Chalam. So it is option one. Because B is greater than A. That means the major axis corresponds to B. What do we have next? Eccentric angle. Now, I hope you remember in parabola, uh, in the last part, we did the parametric equation of parabola. What does parametric equation of parabola is a separately, like we did in parabola separately, because it is very, very, very important with parabola. Similarly, we are in the last part of the ellipse, where in the last part, we are doing the eccentric angle. So this eccentric angle is again basically related to the parametric form of the ellipse. So again, it is very, very important. So what is meant by eccentric angle? Let's see. Eccentric angle is basically x as a parameter. Like in uh, the parabola, the parameter was t. I hope you remember t. So similarly, we have defined eccentric angle to be a parameter for ellipse. But let us first see how have we defined the eccentric angle. So let's say this is an ellipse. Let px, y be a point with center C. So this is an auxiliary circle. The auxiliary circle will be passing through this. So it will look like this. Right. So P is called P is a point x comma y and this point P meets the auxiliary circle P dash. Right. This angle. Which angle? The angle NCP is called the eccentric angle as you can see let me write it here this angle theta is called the eccentric angle so this is the definition of uh, theta what is the definition of theta take any point p on the ellipse get the corresponding point p dash on the auxiliary circle get p on the ellipse get corresponding point p dash on the auxiliary circle join point p dash with origin and the angle made by this line segment with x axis is called the eccentric angle. P dash is called the corresponding point of P. This is a definition. Uh, in many uh, the definitions is important, guys, because many a times we confuse this angle theta by joining with P. If I join with P. I also get this angle and many a times we confuse the eccentric angle with this angle theta. So please remember eccentric angle to obtain eccentric angle we need the corresponding point. 
not the point P. We need the corresponding point P dash. I hope it is clear. This was, this is the basic confusion which happens even to myself. That's why it is better to clear it here. Now it is time for parametric. So what are the parametric equations? Let me tell you, we will do the parametric equation for ellipse, first thing. Second thing, we'll do the parametric equation of tangent. And lastly, third thing, we'll do the parametric equation of normal, as we did in parabola. So same thing, first we'll define parametric equation of ellipse, then tangent to an ellipse, then normal. And then a theory part will be over. Then we can do a question. I think till then our uh, lecture will also get over. Let's see. Yeah. So the parametric ang or parametric equation for ellipse is x equals to a cos theta, y equals to b sine theta, where theta is the eccentric angle. Where theta is the eccentric angle. Theta is the eccentric angle. I hope it is clear. Next. Are called parametric vision. And then we can assume any point P on the ellipse as A cos theta and B sin theta. We can assume any point on the ellipse as A cos theta and B sin theta. Right. So let's see the theorem. Sorry. Yeah. Obviously, this point in short can be denoted by like this. This is P bracket theta. And theta lies between 0 to 360. That is, it rotates one full circle. Now we'll see the parametric equations of tangent. So this, just a second. Yeah. The equation of tangent at point P to the ellipse is given by this. So let the equation of ellipse be x square upon a square plus y square upon b square is equals to 1. Let the equation of the ellipse be x square upon a square plus y square upon b square equals to 1. Right? So, what is the equation of tangent, guys? To find equation of tangent, we use derivative. Right? So I hope you know the differentiation. So the point P is theta. That means the point is A cos theta and B sin theta. Correct? So we have the point. If we get the slope, then we can easily use the slope point form. So how to get slope, guys? We can get slope by differentiating. Uh, some of you all might have already done differentiation in your physics class. I think everyone must have done it. But some of you all might not remember. So I'll like <laughs> differentiation is a complete different chapter in our portion, which is comes in 12th standard. So yeah, guys, if you don't understand the differentiation part, please, it's OK. It's fine. No need to worry. So if I differentiate with respect to x, I'll get 2x upon a square plus 2y into dy by dx upon b square equals to 0. So we can take 2 common and cancel out. So we'll get dy by dx equals to minus x upon a square uh, into b square upon y. Right. 
So let's take the point as x1 comma y1, where x1 is a cos theta and y1 is b sin theta. We substitute the values afterwards of x1 and y1. So this is the slope of tangent. We get the slope of tangent by derivative. So what is the equation of tangent? It will be it will be y minus y1 is equals to m into x minus x1. That will be y minus what is y1? B sine theta is equals to m. m is minus b square. x1 is a cos theta upon a square into y1, which is b sine theta into x minus a cos theta. Uh, we can cancel out one of the b and one of the a. If we cross multiply the a sine theta, so we'll get a y sine theta, why I'm writing s minus a b sine square is equals to uh, minus b x cos theta plus a b cos square. So if I move this x term on y term, both on left hand side, so I'll get b x cos plus a y sine is equals to a b sine square plus cos square. Sine square plus cos square is 1. Now, if we divide both the sides by AB, so if we divide by AB, if we divide by AB, and if we divide by AB, so here B and B will get cancelled, A will get cancelled, here AB will get cancelled. So the required equation will be the same, which is XC, which is theta plus y upon b into sin theta and on the right hand side we have one i hope it is clear is it clear guys give me a thumbs up if you understood or is there any doubt you can ask please go ahead you can ask any doubt or is it clear give me a thumbs up come on everyone give me a thumbs up Okay. Now we'll be doing normal. Just a second, guys. So Yeah. Now we'll see equation of normal. So this is the equation of normal. How to get equation of normal? Same thing. We'll use the slope point form. So first we need to get the slope of normal. Now, uh, this is the point P. What is point P, guys? It is sorry. Yeah. What is point P, guys? P is A cos theta comma B sin theta. Right. So what is the slope? We get the slope of normal from the slope of tangent. We get the slope of normal from the slope of tangent. So let's get the slope of tangent. What was the equation of tangent? This was the equation of tangent. So what is the slope of tangent? It is minus coefficient of a, which is cos theta upon a upon sin theta upon b, which is basically minus b cos theta upon a sin theta. Slope of tangent is minus b cos theta minus b cos theta 
अपॉन ए साइन थीटा राइट सो दैट मींस द स्लोप ऑफ नॉर्मल विल बी नेगेटिव रेसिप्रोकल दैट मींस ए साइन थीटा अपॉन बी कॉस थीटा सो व्हाट विल बी द इक्वेशन ऑफ नॉर्मल y minus y1 is equals to m a sin theta upon b cos theta into x minus a cos theta. So let us cross multiply. So if we cross multiply, I'll get b y into cos theta minus b square into sin cos. Uh, is equals to a x sin theta minus a square into sin. Now I'll take x term on left hand side. So what I'll get guys, I'll get a x sin theta minus b y cos theta is equals to a square minus b square into sin cos so now if we divide by sin cos what will get i think sin and sin will get cancelled cos and cos will get sin cos sin cos so we'll get a x upon cos theta minus b y upon sin theta is equals to a square minus b square. This is our answer. I hope it is clear. Yes or no, guys? Give me a thumbs up if it's clear. Did you all understood? Hello? If you want to see it, please see. Two minutes, I'll give you. Check it out. Okay. Thank you. Chalo. So I think we have completed the theory part today. So next is uh, I would say ki we'll start with the questions next time in the next lecture so i think for now we can revise what we have done till now or we can revise what we have done in this lecture and then end the session all right guys so let's see what we did please pay attention we started with the condition of tangency i am revising it again because this is a very important lecture the second one uh and then from the next lecture, we'll do questions. So as you can see here, how did we get condition of tangency? This was an important part. We got the equation of tangent from our side. That is the equation number one. But the equation of tangent we already had, which was equation number two. That means if two equations represent the same curve, we can compare the coefficients. So we compared their coefficients. We compared their coefficients. And then got the condition. Next, we did were some standard results. What were the standard results, guys? Equation of tangent in slope form. What is slope form? Just replace this C by condition of tangents the point of contact i hope you know that there is like no need to remember the point of contact because we can anytime derive it it just takes 30 to 40 seconds right next we did was some mcqs then we saw auxiliary circle what is the auxiliary circle that the tangents drawn from focus to uh, sorry, the perpendicular drawn from focus to tangent. We leave a foot of perpendicular. 
Now those foot of perpendicular ka locus is basically the auxiliary circle. Next, we did what is the equation of auxiliary circle, right? After this, we did chord of contact. Very simple thing. After we saw the three important equations. What were the three important equations, guys? They were the equation of chord of contact, chord with given middle point, and third was the equation. Third was the equation of pair of tangents. Then we saw some MCQs again, and lastly, we saw the parametric equations. So parametric equation, we saw equation of tangent, equation of normal. I think that's it for today, guys. Thank you all for joining. Uh, we'll end the session two, three minutes earlier. No issues. But it is better we start the MCQs of next time. So my request to you all is please revise your theory part till now completely. And then come in the next session, which is tomorrow. We'll discuss MCQ. Thank you, guys, everyone. Bye-bye. Take care.